Welcome everyone, this is Sharon Blaine. Uh, This is our Hairy Chats podcast. I am super excited to be launching this and beyond excited to be able to share with you some of the world's greatest artists on my podcast. I'm so fortunate to meet some of the most incredible hairdressers that we all identify with worldwide and I've been able to capture some of them for about half an hour to chat with them about what makes them so unique and what is it about their work that has set themselves apart. Today we're going to be talking with the most amazing hairdressers, Jamie and Sally Brooks. I jumped into their salon a couple of weeks ago when I was in London and we sat out the back and we had a wonderful hairy chat about everything to do with the awards in England and Sally obviously at that time was waiting to hear whether she was going to be announced as the British Hairdresser of the Year. I'm going to hold back on whether she made it or not and I'm going to ask you to sit back, grab a coffee and listen to this amazing interview. Hi everyone, I have the privilege of being here with Sally and Jamie Brooks. Now, this is just such a privilege because I love you guys, you know that, don't you? Um, The thing that I love so much about is the fact that you have just done so much as far as the creative side is concerned and, you know, I'm always like curious about how you do it because I don't think anyone comes up with stuff as unique as you do. So before I um, pass this over to the guys, they're going to have a nice little chat. One of the things to just bring you up to speed with, these guys have been in the salon for around 17 years now. I originally met Jamie back in Sydney in the old days of Stutz hairdressing and uh, Jamie was the third year apprentice and I was the senior and we did have some rather interesting times there. Um, we've long moved on, which is probably a good thing for all of us. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jamie come to London and got to, um, he was working with Trevor Sorby, and I take it that's where you guys met, yes. which was fantastic. And I know you've had an amazing experience working with Sorby and did some great things with them. And then obviously the time had come when you needed to do your own thing, which has been commendable because a lot of people find it hard to move on from a, an umbrella as unique as Sorby. But, you know, you've just come into your own rights. You, you've just done something so unique and um, you've made your presence felt. From the minute you took this salon on, we've watched your journey and it's just like, man, this is amazing. So um, I'm just going to put it over to you guys. I guess everyone's going to ask, like, I know this and I want to know too. Like, where do you come up with your ideas? I think a lot of people think that, you know, you can be walking down a street and all of a sudden... An idea pops into your head and I think if you're that person then that's you're really really lucky Mm. but ideas I think and um, coming up with new concepts of things is a work in progress you have to live and breathe it you have to open your eyes to everything around you you have to see things on the street you have to constantly be looking for inspiration Mm -hmm. because then when a job comes in you're not you don't have to find the inspiration the inspiration is always already there yeah you just have to work on it is it fashion that does it for you for me it's not fashion no um for me it's people listening to people um it's things that i see on the bus um it's real things it's and it's also a belief in in who you are as a hairdresser Mm. for me that's a real thing is like i don't tend to follow as much as is possible what other people are doing it's it's a passion for who you are at that year of what you want to do and it's and it's really believing in yourself yeah yeah i think inspiration comes from anywhere you just got to you've got to have your eyes open basically because it is always around you obviously you just got to have your sort of your antennas on um Mm -hmm. you can be walking down the street you can see a drawing you can see a flower you can see a person and anything you just have to be there but you could also walk down the street with your eyes closed or your eyes with your an- antenna off yeah and you don't see it so and also i think you know we, we've tried in the past this whole thing of we'll have an art team jamming session and kind of mm-hmm. ideas between seven and eight and the chances of you coming up with an idea between seven and eight are about oh my god my worst thing is when the team want to have billion. a creative meeting in the morning i am not mm. a morning person mm. i mean mm. so much of what we do is over a glass of wine in the pub yeah. It has yeah, been I, since I, the day I, we yeah. opened. And, and I kind of think, you know, you have to be relaxed to, to be creative. And I think you have to be in an environment that you're comfortable in. Um, and I find actually just chatting to other people is really more how you become creative. Um, yeah. At the moment, we're working a lot on things where, for example, we've been using uh, on the tribute show, we used like a twined rope where we did it. 
different materials, um, some muslin that we'd coloured and things like that. And it's yeah. not always seeing what's there in here, which I is the reason my, um, why it's not fashion. My biggest thing for the last few years, which I think the whole team has wanted to kill me with two words, because my two words of inspiration at the moment, and one is simplicity mm -hmm. and one is nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that is so powerful is when you can strip something back so far mm -hmm. and you just allow your eye to just see that one thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's quite hard for some people to be creative because they're, they're constantly on their phones. Yes. So they're constantly on social media. So what that tends to do when you work like that is it tends to, mm -hmm. you tend to follow something mm -hmm. and you tend to take an idea from somebody else's work. Yes. Sometimes if you put your phone down yeah. and you actually turn your social media off, what you start to do is see other things in the world yeah. that aren't things that have been done before. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, my favorite words are simplicity and nothing. And it's, it's that power of of stripping something so far back yeah. that you've only got that one detail and yeah. how to silence an audience with the word nothing. Yeah. So you're channeling somebody into only seeing simplicity. Yeah. So do you think the fashion has gone a little bit crazy now? I've been looking at some interesting stuff mm -hmm. coming through and it's like, oh my God, it's just like everything but the kitchen sink on the mm -hmm. head. You know, there's braids, there's teas, there's mess, there's mm -hmm. colour, there's stuff stuck in. So yeah. where, does, your, where does my eye look i know it's it's discord yeah. isn't it yeah and, and i think it's like you know you you have to i think in now in a world is such a multimedia world that the thing is is there are influences like literally from the second you wake up there's your phone there's your ipad your computer your tv your and you're almost so bombarded so people's brains are almost overloaded mm -hmm. whereas if you can just strip everything out and like sal said put your phone away put everything away and you just focus on one thing because it's so much easier and more powerful. It makes that one single thing more powerful yep. yeah. rather than putting Lots three things, things on, right? Like yeah. one thing done extremely well I mean, I'm in this raw I'm constantly with the staff, if they, you know, if they come up with an idea and it's great. The one thing I say to them is when I watch people trying to be creative, I'm like, stop trying to create the idea that's in your head. Start looking in the mirror at what you're doing because the mistake you made is an idea that didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So if you're constantly only trying to create one style, that's the style you're trying to create. But if you actually stand back and stand back and watch when you're working, what you find is something new. Oh, absolutely. And it's absolutely. the one biggest thing I'm like, and then I'm always like, and simplify, and simplify, mm -hmm. peel and simple. peel it back to the yeah. one thing that you've come up with that is unique, Yeah. peel it back. Yeah. But also I think to be creative, what you need to do is you need to arm yourself with a lot of skills. Yeah, absolutely. If you haven't got the skills up your jumper or up your armpit, you are limiting yourself to being creative. And this is exactly what I spoke to Jeremy about before we got started. You know, we talked about our competition days. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were, you know, great days for us. But what we took from that was incredible skills. Yes. And there is no way in God's world, I'm sure, and Jamie agreed, we, mm -hmm. you could possibly entertain even taking your ideas to a level if you don't if you have the hair skills yeah if you don't know how to do them and you've got to arm yourself because obviously the the wider your skill set then your outcome is is going to be much much broader for example as a hairdresser if you can only cut and then hairdressing goes for example all long sets for argument's sake you know you're not going to be able to do any of that type of work so the broader your skill set is if you can cut you can color you can do long hair you can do this you can yeah. do that then actually you can achieve a lot whereas yeah. otherwise you're gonna your creativity is going to be limited yeah. actually by your skills it's like you know just the, the simplest thing of taking a tong if you take a tong and you've only followed what everyone else is doing you've never worked how the tong works in your hand that's right so when it works in your hand yeah. it allows you to be more creative that's right but when it only works from you watching somebody else using it mm -hmm. it's not enough no it's because only enough it's to follow just, and you only believe that that is the only way anyhow yes until you take the time out to think oh if i hold it this like this way, way or upside or down way, back to yeah. front and yeah, I'm, well you know you've got to take time that's why I said you can't just be creative right at the beginning. You can't just be a creative. So can I ask you this? Do you ever burn out? Do you ever get um, to a point I, that I there's nothing in the can? No, I don't think you burn out. I think you have, you know, like a, a bit like a sportsman, right? You have like a poor run of form mm. where essentially you go a bit barren for a while. But then it comes, well, hopefully it, it then comes back. Um, I don't think you can, well... I'm not lucky enough or gifted enough that I just wake up in the morning and there are ideas in my head. Yeah. Um, you know, for the people who do have that, that's fantastic and I bet that's brilliant. But I, I think, you know, you, you, you can't force something, like it will, it will just come. You've just 
got to do it on the level that you think that you know because any form of creativity is something that you think is new or creative it doesn't mean that someone else thinks it you also have to be aware that I think this is new and this is where I want to go and you've got to be brave enough to actually go mm. that's where I want to go because that's where I think a lot with the young generation that I watch now because with things like Instagram they they tend to follow all the time they see what someone else is posting and then they slightly change it or they just do the same thing so it doesn't allow them any flexibility or, or freedom I also think advice if I was given to anybody is a lot of people out there think that entering awards is probably not their thing or it's a little bit old-fashioned or standing on stage you know sh big shows aren't the thing but if you have them in your diary it gives you a timeline that you have to work towards yes, something that's true. if you have no timeline you're constantly th thinking I can do something better mm -hmm. but if you have a show or a collection to shoot or a small presentation to do or if you're going to put yourself on a platform to be ridiculed mm -hmm. or accoladed you have a timeline to work for and that timeline forces you to come up with an idea yeah, yeah. it's really instrumental if you want to be a creative of mm -hmm. having a show to work towards or a presentation or something in your salon otherwise you have no timeline so tell me what happens when you've shot for the British hairdressing awards yep. that energy that's gone in there for what would it be three months yeah that you'd really yes work on it working yes. yourself and you're obsessed become obsessive about it I would imagine um, you know really you know really detailing, detailing it detailing it yes when you walk out of there, what happens to you? Do you just go flat? No, you, you go, thank God that's over. <laughs> Tick, move on to the next thing. Yeah. You have to have something else to work towards. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. I never, ever come off a job flat. I come off a job, as soon as I finish a job, it's done. Mm -hmm. I don't listen to a podcast. I don't watch a show back. It's done. It's move on. Mm -hmm. And it's move on and come up with something new. Yeah. yeah. So you put it in the box. It's done. You've worked it backside off it's the best detailing you can and detailing is a really good word it's the best you could have got that job to do close the box move mm, on mm, but if you also get stuck on one idea you only known for that one idea if you're yes. a braider oh I'm known for braiding Christ if you want to be in this industry a long time you know we've been in it how long now how you long can't have you been in oh, it it's give only me, give five, me an idea. 20, 30, 30, 30 years yeah 31 for me 30 31, years 30 but you know, you, you can't just say that you, you're only known for that one style of hair. No, but unfortunately I think this is what's happening with Instagram. Would you believe that? Yeah, you, massively. What's your thoughts on that? Because gee, you know, I'm a bit concerned about these Insta-famous people out there. Um, I, I think it's, it's, you know, in the words of some, someone like Andy Warhol, everyone can be famous for like 15 minutes. And I do think something like Instagram, it's a very positive and a very negative thing at the same time. Like it allows people who previously didn't have the money to shoot or PR or this, mm -hmm. it gives them a platform on which they can launch their work. But it also allows people to manipulate that in a way to do something controversial in order to gain followers, to gain more notoriety, so on and so forth. So it can be misused. I think a, a, a platform whereby as people can see other people's work is brilliant. But I do believe it. the problem is, is what it's doing is it's making people think other people's thoughts and it's it's forming the thoughts of other people far too much and it's influencing far too much. Whereas before you flick through a magazine, you go, that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. Whereas now with Instagram, it's constantly those with the followers and people are trying to, they're trying to be followed and mm -hmm. therefore they're trying to do something going, right, well, they did that and it worked for them, so I'm going to try that. Mm -hmm. And then it's actually stifling people sort of being individual and being creative because they're, 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 and also as well in this generation, I notice a lot is there's a real fear of people not liking it or being disfollowed or unfollowed or whatever the saying for it is. And, and they, they want to be accepted. So therefore yeah. they, you know, they, they don't want to go too far from the crowd. You know, there's also a real thing like, about it. I don't know how you feel about this. It's like when you look at something on Instagram, you flick, yes. flick, flick, flick it's all about content mm -hmm. when you see something in print or you actually take time to think of an image whether you like it or not whether you like a picture that somebody's done or a hairstyle that somebody's done if you actually took time to think how did they come up with the concept that background is amazing mm -hmm. the paper they've chose to print it on the attention to detail to get that perfect picture mm -hmm. is so different to see it in print yeah for me than flick flick yeah. flick but you don't ever take time to look at it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but, but I mean, but, I find myself no, you just, doing you it. Just run but through, you, you might run through stop it. occasionally. Yeah. You might go like, 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 yeah. like. 
but, but yeah, you, you know, just get caught up with one and think, oh, okay, that's good. I'm going to screen grab that. But yes, it's pretty much a flick, flick, flick. But so it's, it's that about instant content. sort of gratification, and and everyone wants that instant. Oh yeah, yeah. But there's no sort of long lasting. That's the one thing with the Insta famous sort of generation is it is Insta famous, right? Like you can have a hundred thousand followers, and then someone else gets hundred thousand followers, and you just you just fall off into mm. sort of nowheresville, else right? Gets to be the new yeah, that's right. And then, and then they are the, the, the kind of next big thing. Um, unfortunately now though, because of the power of social media, uh, well, I'm seeing a lot that large corporations, are, uh, because they don't really understand it that well, they're, they're trying to get on board. So the value of someone having 100,000 followers now for a, a L'Oreal or a Weller or a Schwarzkopf or someone like that, is everyone wants to know so what's your following what's your following what's your following and it's becoming it's starting to influence what like what we do because we don't have as many followers as many many individuals out there and it's you know in the product companies like oh well you know you need to get social media up and you sort of think well, I, I, do I will never are they to talk because they've never been that influenced by social media no now. but i will never put that pressure on anybody that works here mm. to have that following mm. i will never put that pressure on them they're conscious of it, they have to have a following, they have to be present. But I would never put the pressure on them yeah. to have that following. Yeah. Yeah. I would put the pressure on them to do good work. Mm. Yeah, and, and, on and everything I, they yeah, do. Yeah, and I wouldn't gauge someone being a good or a poor hairdresser by how many actual followers they've and got. Because do you know it comes on a CV now when you get a CV in? Yeah, because also as well, like, I mean, Instagram, you know, you got to remember Instagram, like, I could take a picture from someone, right? And I could put it on my Instagram. So there's a lot of plagiarism in Instagram. I could make someone's hair go blue. I could, do, without having the ability or the skill to do it, mm. I, I can cheat. I mean, that's the that's the one really bad thing about Instagram is the filtering and the cheating and mm. the retouching that goes on before it goes on there. Mm -hmm. That's life at the moment. Though. Yeah, that's... And, but that's in general, right? So everyone can paint a picture of here I am on my perfect holiday with my perfect partner, with my perfect house that we're staying, with my perfect meal. And all of that is just a facade. And I yeah. think a lot of that, that's what Instagram is. It, it's, it's, it, the, the actual depth of it is almost irrelevant. Like, mm. uh, you know, mm. like we were both away recently and you, you see people sitting at a restaurant and they're taking pictures of, of, of their dinner. <laughs> and you kind of think you're sitting there with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, right? My like, dad did that in the restaurant, yeah, didn't he? I'm like, he said, I'm glad I'm not on a date with, with her because I'd have dumped her already in the middle of the restaurant. Yeah, it was like... But you know, That's she put table. her phone. She put her phone yeah. down. And it's like people aren't. They're not experiencing the moment. Like I was at one of our staff got married on Saturday, mm. and everyone's flicking through his pictures. And they're like, "Oh, what are your pictures like?" I'm like, "I actually didn't. I didn't take didn't any. Take any. Didn't, didn't take a picture because mm. I actually wanted to enjoy the wedding, and I didn't yeah. want. It. I'd left my phone on the table." And that's it. Whereas everyone else is, you know, they're Instagramming while we're at the wedding. And mm. I kind of think, why aren't you just enjoying it? In, why enjoying are you enjoying the wedding? wedding? Why are you on the dance yeah. floor instead of sitting yeah. outside getting a signal? To, Just yeah, to try and to, do the to put a you, I mean, you've had an amazing career. Do you think you would have survived being younger, coming into the industry with the Instagram? I've got to say, I think I've done well to achieve what I've done, probably by social media. Okay, yeah. I think social media has given me a, a platform. Audience, yep. yep. Which I would never have got if I was sitting in downtown Australia. Yep. And I would have to say for me, first and foremost, it's probably YouTube. Yeah, um, that probably got me there by posting videos. Yeah, and everybody mm -hmm. that I speak to say, "Oh, I saw you on social media. I saw you on um, YouTube, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. And I wouldn't have thought at 54 years of hairdressing—that's my how many years I have. I, you know, pinch myself regularly to think that mm -hmm. I'm still pulling a massive class it's amazing, yeah. around mm -hmm. the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, when do I stop? Like you Never. Know, straight away, <laughs> walk away Never. from it. Mm -hmm. But you know, while the going's good, I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep going. But um, I have to say social media is probably what's helped me um, mm -hmm. be recognized and known. But we're very strategic in what we place. We don't do food. We don't do my lifestyle. We do very much um, more an educational options. So we're giving them little little bits and pieces to keep mm -hmm. them, you know, coming back and engaged with us. Yeah, and, 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 and I do think social media can be, a, a, it can be a great platform. Yeah. As long as it's used rightly, it's just, unfortunately, it can be manipulated yes. by people and used what I would call wrongly. Um, mm. Because I, I also think what tends to happen is people can, can be very good on social media and do this and that. And then when they actually have to physically stand on a stage in front yeah. of a thousand people and yeah. come up with the goods, they can't do it. They can't do it. They can't do like it. they really can't yeah. do it. Um, you know, so 
it's it, it, but it's, it has it, given it, yeah people that probably wouldn't have had a platform in the industry yeah, and mm. I think it's a platform it's definitely done that as well so it has That's the good bad and the ugly really doesn't yeah. it yeah I, I think there's a lot of things you know I mean, I mean social media is at the moment the kind of buzz thing around our industry I think it's almost become you know people have tended to get a bit bogged down in it because mm. I think it's you know it's one of those things it's a bit like you know a periodical in a magazine like you can't it's it's a it's a thing right it's a fad it's going to come and in five years time we're going to it's going to go but that's what you know I, I do think people will look back at this part of hairdressing and it is going to be something that changed the industry mm. like, oh, I and think it's, it's definitely done that a hundred percent and that's got to be a positive because as long mm. as the industry moves forward yes and you it has to move forward so, so where do you think the industry is going I mean I know in Australia we're having major issues getting staff. Is this is for you guys and here? when you say issues getting staff, getting staff in an employed environment or just getting staff um, as actually hairdressers? Getting, engaging young people that want to be hairdressers and mm -hmm. actually going to college, you know, to to want to do to be hairdressers. Well, it is a problem. Yeah, it, it is. It's a huge problem here, and I think it's, it's a global problem. Do you think it's well. changing? Can you see us um, moving a little bit better in another in a more positive? I, I, no, I do. I I think, you know, at the moment we're we're really competing with a lot of other industries which are for young people a lot mm -hmm. sexier, like the Googles and the Instagrams, mm -hmm. the Amazons mm -hmm. of this world. The bloggers. You know, yeah, they yeah. can get paid. You know, there, there's too many sort of I wouldn't say easy rides, but mm -hmm. there are other ways now that you can eke out a very comfortable yeah. living um you know i mean you know you look at people like google and they've got a running track on the roof and a skateboard <laughs> rack downstairs and an on-site so it's a cool place yeah to and be. it's cool you know and Maybe i think we should be offering that yeah and i think something sometimes that's what hairdressing needs to change it it does need to, this whole concept of you know the first years come in and they do scrubbing yep. scrubbing floors with See, toothbrushes yeah and just I, I just because we did it yeah it, yeah. it doesn't make it, doesn't it right it. yeah it's, you know, it's, it's exactly it's, what i'm i'm trying to say to people you know what we did is not what, what we can should be doing no yeah. and 100%. it wasn't right then and it's not right now right like mm. to behave like that with young people is only going to force them away and especially now when they have 50 million other options that they yeah. can go to whereas i think when i went into hairdressing partly it was because you know, it was a really cool, attractive industry now, or it was then. And now I think we've been superseded by a lot of other industries. Yeah. And I think this attitude of, well, you know, I did it when I was a junior and I had to scrub yeah. floors with a toothbrush. It's like, well, it so what? When, 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 when I went to school, it doesn't. I used to get the cane nearly every day, but I would never allow my kids to go to school <laughs> and get caned. It, it, it doesn't, just because I had that happen to me it's not how we it, need it to doesn't do mean it. it's right no, like no. it's not and i think you know industries and the world evolves and you can't just continue doing but i, I don't always think we we shine a light on how how to promote hairdressing into schools and things i don't no. think we sometimes make it like it sexy is a good enough. job sexy enough yeah. i mean i don't know if you've heard that you know i've just finished making a documentary no tell yeah me. So when I won uh, the Hairdressing Award last year, I decided that with the award, what I would do is give something back to the industry. Mm -hmm. So I've just spent the last, well, Jamie's about to kill me if I don't yeah, finish it soon. Nine months. Six months. Nine. Nine. <laughs> well, no, 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 I'm not <laughs> filming it. No, it's six months. Um, making Third a documentary. Yeah. So November. I'm doing, shut up. <laughs> Tell me you used to be married, can't you? Um, <laughs> so um, I'm finishing, I'm f hopefully this week. Yeah. And it's an hour, hour and a quarter long. Right. And it's to go into schools and colleges. Fantastic. To promote hairdressing right from teachers think it's a good job, schools think it's a good job, and parents think it's mm -hmm. a good job. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully you'll get to it in Australia. I would love to yep. get our hair. That would be amazing. Yep. This is where social media is going to help us. Yes. Yes. Yes, because actually it is to going to be available yeah that would be yeah it's of called the um the journey to my destination yeah. so it starts That's right from it. um how hard it is to be a hairdresser mm -hmm. you know when the, the scissors don't fit in your hand mm -hmm. and how uh, yeah, there's how many hairdressers interviewed in this 17 17 hairdressers wow. different types of hairdressers i went up and down the country yeah. interviewed and then it shows how if you keep going yeah you know this you stumbles doing something at 54 years and, down and the, the longevity <laughs> of being yes. a hairdresser so and you can own your salon you can travel you can yes. have kids you can an earn money industry. amazing mm. but we don't promote i've never we've seen never it on tv promoted like that what the options are oh. beyond standing, standing behind, in the, a behind, chair. behind yes. the chair and listening to women whinge so about their life there you go so it's a one and a quarter hour oh, full-on so documentary that sounds incredible yeah, it and, should and be finished this side yeah. of the year 
Yeah, and, and obviously, you know, that, that documentary, it's, as much as it's, you know, it's got headdresses in it, it's one of those things that is about the journey to the destination. Yes. So mm. that could apply to any, any industry. industry. Right? It's not yes, just ours. Yes. It's, it's about young people coming in and, and actually... And working hard. Yeah. And training learning, well, yeah, learning a craft. Learning their craft mm -hmm. and then what they can succeed mm -hmm. with that craft. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you guys are a prime example. I mean, let's face it, Jamie. Look where mm -hmm. you are from where you were. Jamie says well, the right. best bit in the documentary when we interviewed him, and mm -hmm. he says, when everyone else was doing cool hair, me and Rich were told to stand there winding a perm. Yeah. And it's the best skills mm. I've ever learned. And I've how many learned. perms did we do Fuck there? Fucking hell, yes. Jesus, didn't we ever? <laughs> but, yeah, oops, sorry, but it was, um, yeah, it was one of those things, and it was, at the time, I think, that's something that has now almost gone from the hairdressing industry too, is that real discipline towards the craft and mm. the constant, like we used to learn through repetition, yes, right? Yes. Whereas nowadays, repetition, repetition. everybody wants to go online. You know, we, we had someone at an interview recently for a L'Oreal ID thing, and they'd, they'd taught themselves through Instagram. So obviously their skills were patchy. They weren't, didn't have any depth. Whereas I think... I don't agree well, with that. No, I, no, I was no, the opposite I to you. Think, no, I, I thought I it was amazing that. that somebody was absolutely ballsy enough to sit there and do that much research on YouTube that they could train themselves to be a colourist. Mm -hmm. That Gosh. takes commitment. Gosh. Do you see that's what I mean? Huge. It's huge. Yeah. And maybe that's the way we're going. It's hard to say. It is hard it to, is. Say. to say. But I still think if we could arm people up better... You know, we, we would allow we would give people more longevity. Whereas nowadays, people go into something, they give it a go, they come out. They go into something else, they give it a go, they come out. If people could actually get a broad enough skill set, they could realise that within whatever sector it was hairdressing or carpentry or plumbing or banking. Anyway, it doesn't matter what you do, you could then branch off into other areas. But obviously, as you know, because you're one of the people who've actually trained me, was that. If you can get a big enough thing, it's like I'm now, you know, coming from suburban Sydney to now owning a salon here in central London, and that's great. But have, had I not had that bigger backing behind mm. me, I, I, I couldn't have done that, right? And it took, and you know for well that the nights that we used to be there, 10, 11 o'clock every single yep. night of the week, training. training and training and training and repetition. And you know what? But it has. It's really paid back now because now, you know, here I am now, and that's a great position to be in. But I know had I not done that, it would have unraveled a lot quicker. But that's mm. a really interesting one because don't you think it's also, if, if you're going to take on an apprentice, because there's so few of them coming to, into mm. the industry, you as a boss have got to be prepared to train them right. Yes. If you're not going to put the commitment in to train them right, give them to somebody that will. Exactly. It's not fair yeah. on the kid coming well, into I the think industry. Most people are just like, oh, oh I've got a job. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm going to start hairdressing and then I'll ask the question, well, where? And then I mm. think, oh my God, this is not going to, this is not going to end well. Because your team that because you surround yourself is yeah. your family. Connected. Yep. I'm always going to nose my, you know, recommend, mm -hmm. you know, some of my colleagues that I most admire for their training skills. Always going to push them like yeah. that way. That way. Yeah. So you know, I get a lot of people knocking on my door saying, "Can you give me some advice?" And even mature people, the yeah. same thing. And I'm always, I've got this handful of salons in Sydney that are always open for someone, mm -hmm. and I'm always going to push them in the yep. right direction mm -hmm. because. Otherwise, we're going to lose them mm -hmm. before they even get their foot in the door. Especially if they're good. I'm like, if yes. they're good, they've got the potential of doing something with the industry. Don't mess them around because they're just mm. going to leave. Yeah. Yeah. So and because so if you're going to train someone, like you said, you were there till yeah. ten o'clock with Jamie. That's mm. what you need. Yeah. You need yeah. that and, mentor. And, and and it's all about this. Well, you know, I should I be paid for it? It's like, come on. <laughs> God, if I hear yeah. that word anymore. <laughs> yeah, but but, but but I also oh, think no. you know because I, I think the hairdressing business. Is sp specifically went through a big change in the 90s um, mainly because of the chains and the pressure of they wanted to get people in through their academies and out, out. on the floor yep. as fast as possible so I have what we call the GHD generation oh, who yes. basically they learned to GHD and they learned that's what hair was because at that moment in time that's what straight. hair was right but then we got into the noughties and then on the shows and things like that everyone was tongy ever so and, and they couldn't do it, right? And, but I think that's really bad on the people that trained them. Yes. Because For also as well, you've given it. them a five to 10 year lifespan in the business, there is right? No, it's, that, and that doesn't last. No. No. Exactly, and this is, I see this with the, you know, I won't even put a tong out in my mm -hmm. class. 
because I want I say to them you have to be more professional yeah. mm -hmm. the client can do what you can yes. do so they're going to turn around one day and say well why did you charge me for that because I do it better at, at home, home. Mm -hmm. yeah. so you know we've got to grow our skill set yep. to be more true mm -hmm. because the client can also go on YouTube and it's learn it very all. very clever people yes. well absolutely and, 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 and I think you know it's, it's really it's kind of almost like the industry needs to do a full circle now whereas you know we went through that like when I went through, as you know, we had a four-year apprenticeship. We were indentured. You couldn't leave. You're indentured. You, yeah. Indentured. Yeah, <laughs> indentured. you're you're indentured. I thought you were indentured. No, I was no, like, no, really, no. bloody. No, you're, you're indentured. You're, you're not allowed to leave, and nor are they allowed to fire you if you leave your apprenticeship yeah. at any period in the four years. <coughs> you cannot do apprenticeship in any uh, in any skill. Um, Whereas now you see, it's like the grass is greener. People are poaching staff through social media. Mm. It's like, come on, we're all in the same business here. Yeah, it's a tough. It's industry. a tough They're industry. Really, you know, sadly enough, there's a lot of unscrupulous people within the industry, and they're there yep. for their own means, and they're enticing people over the for not the right reasons. Yep. And you know, those kids think it's all cool to be yep. knocked on the door yep. and somebody offering them a. I always mm -hmm. say fifty dollars extra a extra, week and yeah. a chicken sandwich yep. for lunch. Mm -hmm. um, but the reality is, it only lasts for three months, and then they think, "Oh, maybe I shouldn't have left." Yep. We have the same discussion. Yep. Regularly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it is, and, and I think it's a, it's you know there was that move you know when really for me the the time that the industry boomed was the mid to late nineties when we had we know we're in the UK anyway we we had our own TV shows we had Star Challenge we mm. had this we had that and we were everywhere so there was this huge pressure to get people on, on through the floor yeah. and you know training suddenly from three years went down to twelve months mm -hmm. so suddenly you had someone you know a seventeen year old by the time they had their eighteenth birthday they were out on the floor doing it, put money in the till. They were taught six air cuts. they don't grow and did from one there. Six. No, and they no. can't. And that's the thing. No. And and I think that's now why the industry needs to get back to those basics and say, right, we need to arm them with this, 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 and this. Because, you know, if you're in the business long enough and you will know this, you know, the industry changes, right? Like at one point it's cutting. At the moment, it's, it's, it's all about color, right? Yeah. Like that's where the business is. And, you know, therefore, if you have no knowledge of color or no skill in color, then you're obviously going to be you're going to be in trouble, right? Mm. But so you, you also have to, as a, as a boss, you have to allow your company to move. Yes. You have to... You but, you know, if you just live in the past, yep. mm -hmm. you're going to way things always work, live in the past. Then, mm. sadly enough, you can't expect anything, any mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone always says to us, at the beginning of the year, do you sit down and write your business I was plan? Ask you that. No. Oh, God, no. We do have Never. a glass of wine every Thursday night, and that's where we write our business yeah. plan. And, 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 it's like and we think, have always done yeah, it. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's something that, like, coming right back to your first question of saying you know how do you be creative it's like you, you have to be creative 100 percent of the time it's just like you have to run your business 100 percent of the yeah. time you have to be you can't just say right on january 1 we're going to make all these plans and then by january 2nd fuck it we're just gonna oh, it's all too we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're, yeah we're gonna forget it we're, we're just gonna back. do what we're doing or it doesn't allow you, you know, to bring in somebody that you didn't know you were going to employ mm -hmm. or an opportunity comes in that wasn't in your your scale mm. uh, and so we've never worked like that we always yeah. leave the doors completely open yeah. You know, we obviously know what we need to take. We we yeah. know how much money, we know how many staff, we know all of that. Yeah. But what we never do is set plans that we can't break. Yeah. No, because you, yeah. you have to have that actual flexibility because let's say something happens and there's a like a social media explosion mm -hmm. um, happens again and we, and that's not in our plan. We can't just go, well, do you know what? Until next January. We can't do anything can't about do it. that. Yeah. Um, and we do. And we, like every single Thursday since the day we opened, Sal and I would sit down, we have a meet, we'll have a meeting. We've done it every, every Thursday. Th every Incredible. single Thursday it's night. It's two 17 things. years it's in a row. <laughs> it's one, me and Jamie get to have a chat about the week. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is it's we have a drink on the avenue. So it's that opportunity that we're not in the office. We're not in the salon anyone can have a drink with us mm -hmm. and so you can sort out so many niggles mm. over a glass of wine mm. niggles shouldn't come to the office yes. because then it's not a niggle yes when it comes whereas over a glass of wine it's like oh god you're being a real pain in the ass this week what's mm. going on that's mm. a conversation mm. in an office it's like you're being a real pain in the ass yes, this week it's difference. massively different yeah. mm. and it means that everyone that doesn't get a chance to speak to us knows on a Thursday night whether it's raining snowing sunny we're going to be sitting on the avenue you can just come and join us for a drink yeah. and we sort out so many uh, small cool. things yeah That's and it's really something yeah. that like me it's and Sal really yeah, well. so for the host although for the first half hour it's just me it's and us, Sal yeah. mm -hmm. um, no matter what and it also as well it's it's like it gives you know because all I for well know around the world every pub on a Friday night is full of people moaning about their boss yes mm -hmm. right 
However, in our situation, we don't obviously have a boss. We spend every Thursday night moaning about our staff. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's not and we that work we don't out like what is them. a nickel mm -hmm. and what yeah. is a problem. Mm. And you've got to have and that blow And if you don't assess them, the niggles become a problem. Because yeah. what we do is we, we rant or we go, oh, you know, they're all like not putting the toilet seat down or they're not selling any products. But, you know, once we've ranted about it, it's not the major thing. Yeah, and the once world. it's gone, yeah. it's, it's gone. It, it's yeah. gone, right? And then you've lifted yourself out of that baggage. And it's the same as when our staff, like, if, if for example, on a Friday, because obviously we're in the avenue we're in, everyone goes to drink, go for a drink. I'm like, yeah, I'll come for one. But then I leave because I know that they're going to moan about yes. us, right? And that's okay. It's human nature. And it's it's good that they do because I, I'd rather them moan about us and go, oh, bloody Jamie and Sally, they did this and why aren't they letting us do that? Rather than, and they go, oh, yeah, well, you rather know. Rather than secretively then, make you know it what? into a big deal. Yeah. And then mm. they've said it, it's out in the open. They're like, oh, maybe it's not so bad. Yeah. yeah. And then it's okay. I don't want them, because otherwise it builds up and they come into the office and then they go, oh, this is the problem. The amount blah, of blah, blah, times, blah. like the, the, and, the, you know, the team, you, you were in the office now, but you, the team don't realise that you can hear everything in the staff room mm. through these walls. Mm -hmm. And the amount of times I'm thinking, don't bring it to the office. Don't bring it to the office. It's not that big a deal. And you can see them walk back the other way to the staff room. Because I'm like, once you bring it in the office, yeah, well, that's the we thing. We have to deal yeah, with it. Yeah, I mean, too. yeah. And, and it's the same thing as like, if we have a, you know, drink on a, if we have a drink on a Thursday and it's like 10 o'clock on a set, because we don't finish till nine. So it's about 10 o'clock on a Thursday night and they come over and they go, oh, you know, you, you really got to learn to put your shit away after you finish your client, yeah, yeah. right? And it's done, it's dusted, it's really easy. But if I say, excuse me, can you please come into the office with me for five minutes? No. And suddenly it's, it's a, a drama, thing. right? Mm. It's drama Rama central. Whereas on a Thursday, they're like, they got a glass of wine in their hand. They're like, oh, sorry. Yeah, cool. And then it's mm. done. Right, and it's done. Well, it's it really worked like for us. That's probably been the key to the success of growing such a large team. team. Because mm -hmm. you know, I've had up to forty-six working in that cellar mm -hmm. in Beecroft at one stage, and mm -hmm. believe me, mm -hmm. I I feel your pain. Mm -hmm. And you know, some of the stuff that you have to deal with is so petty you can't even believe it came out of their mouth. But then, but for them, it's major. Yes, and it's everyone's yeah. at different stages but in their listening life. Listening to you, yeah. um, this doing a bit of a drink. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's where I missed out. Maybe mm. I should have just got the bottle of wine out. And well, you know, but you know, by having a big team is like there's certain team that are like they they kind of want more out of their careers, and they always find the time to talk to you. Mm. They always talk to me. They will even if I'm fully booked, they will always find the time to talk to me. But your other ones, you have to find the time to talk mm. to. Do you know what I mean? Otherwise, the other lost. ones take over. They get lost. Yes. Yeah. So it's trying to find the time to to speak to mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell me in closing, Sal, how do you feel about next Monday with the awards? What's, uh, what's your thoughts on that? Do you know, it's one of them funny nights. It's, um, I, I never, ever enter a competition to win. I don't yeah. shoot a collection That's to win. That's interesting, because I often wonder. No, um, I think you, you shoot a collection that represents who you are mm -hmm. that year and what you believe is mm -hmm. highlights the type of hairdresser yeah. you are that year. Um, Everybody that is nominated for the award is amazing. Yeah. It doesn't matter who wins the award, as long as they do with it the right thing to move the industry forwards. Yeah, I agree with and you. And that's, that's the most that's important, important thing. I never mind who wins it when I was nominated and when I wasn't, but as long as it's the person that is going to move the industry forward. How many times have you been nominated for Just the last year. Awards? You know, how incredible, like mm -hmm. how excited were we as females to finally get a girl over the line. How long is it since? I think was it's it been Antoinette. No, no, no. Lisa Shepherd. I think it's been Lisa? about ten, ten, ten years. Ten since we years had a girl ish. In the rain. Yeah. You know. But I said that in an interview the next day. I went. I did a TV interview, and somebody said, "How does it feel to be the first woman to win the award?" And I said, "I'm not the first woman to win the award. I'm the first female to be nominated in ten years. Ah, and yes. unless you're nominated, you can't win it. No, that's true. That's true." <laughs> So it's not about the w it's not about winning. And Jamie, do you feel like sometimes like how do you feel about this? Because I I see you guys on the same mm -hmm. level, and yet Sally's up there winning the award. Mm -hmm. Do you have any sort of feelings um, about that? No, not really. We've won a lot of stuff together. We are still our own brand. Mm -hmm. um, if Sal wins, it's still beneficial for our brand. Yeah. No, it's good. I mean, obviously, well, you particularly know our history, um, but I would still now that we are divorced i would still call sal like my hair wife mm. because it's one of those things that, that. <laughs> that we will always be because we are brooks and brooks right brooks and brooks to me is you know i'm equally as happy if sal wins as i am if grace or marlon yeah. or mm. one of the team win you know mm. because i think it reflects really positively on the thing i'm not a particular i don't know fame seeker 
as such. No, so none I'm, of us are. It's yeah, probably so, been a little bit of that. Yeah, so I'm not. Downfall. I'm not uncomfortable with it. Um, yeah, you know, I kind of think we've won a lot together in the past. We've won things individually in the past. You it's sound cool. like a champion supporter. Yeah, well, you you know, I think you, I, I think you know, once you have your own company, I think if you work individually, it's very different. Whereas mm. if once you have your own company, you have to do what is in the interest of the company. That's um, right. And obviously, if Sal wins it, I mean, clearly it has to be one of us because obviously we are Brooks and Brooks, right? And we're the people who can't leave. Of course, it's in my interest if Sal wins. Or it's in, it's in my interest if grace goes and wins her kind of thing it, it's yeah. as you know it is intrinsically linked i'm not particularly bothered whether i'm in it or not i'm involved in it you know pretty much everything from helping on the shoot to doing this to doing that to booking models to being there so you do not bollocks. get involved in booking models well, you write the no, bloody check that's right yeah. i write oh, the check and i do this that's big i say that's, that's the fucking i tell you too. now that's the big part <laughs> um but you know we have had quite split jobs yeah for the last few years yeah mm. no we have jamie does and more the financial yeah, side yeah, of it yeah. and i do the creative yeah, yeah. So and it's, it's good I, I mean i think we, we have decided or not decided but we have found having the business is is one of the things is you can't there's no point you both doing the the same job no. right because all you do is you double up you compete with each other mm. and it's unnecessary so if is you know if I can take the financial pressure and do and look after that side of the business, then it allows Sal to do it. Because mm. if I say to her, you've got to come and do the financial side, then I then have to go no, and do the creative tough. side, right? It's so it. it's much, much better that everyone just does what they do well, mm. rather it's than, you know, and if Sal does that better than me, that's cool. And then I can look after the finances because I just have that in me naturally. Cool. Yeah. Like it, yeah. it's good because it all, you know, one does not work without the other because Obviously, you know, a collection, as much as it's nice to shoot, you know, is never going to happen unless someone can pay for it as well, right? So, yes. you know, so one thing does lead to and from the other part of it. And mm. it's just, yeah, I, I don't know. It doesn't, it, let's just say I'm not unduly bothered by it. Well, I think you guys have a most hum harmonious relationship. I'm sure that if my ex-husband and I were sitting in this same room, it, it wouldn't be quite Do you know, I'm actually godmother to Jamie's kids. Yeah, Which that's is, right, to that's my really children. Yeah. yeah, I really think that's yeah. just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, apart from your business relationship, the creative, wonderful creativeness that you guys have, the fact that you have such a great respect for each other is, is you know, unique in its own way, as, as I'm sure you understand, and people probably said that many times mm -hmm. as well. Well, I'd, I want to say thank you for giving me your time because I know it's not easy and this is uh, your afternoon to get out there and be what, creative a little creative bit Creative a little bit because we have the awards on Monday and I haven't booked my models yet. Oh, and you've got to figure <laughs> out what the hell you're going to do thank with you. as well? Thank you. Yes. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. That'll be my next bit of the <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. So, look, thank you for your time. No, thanks Thank for you very much us. for coming in. Yeah. And I will definitely make sure you get this little podcast back to you so you can hear yourself. And we'll get the documentary over to you. And I would love yeah. that because we'd definitely like to get behind that yep. and push it out through. Yep. I've got a rather large social media There you go, you can have so it, yeah. I think I'll definitely get yeah. some leverage there for you. And no, we'd love to do that. It's very interesting, be yeah. And you know, like yourself, um, I just don't think there's a better career path or a better you know, industry to be in than hairdressing and um, you know, anything to make it better. And I congratulate yeah. you for pushing yourself and pushing yourself to the end of next week to get it completed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thank you for your time, guys. Thank you. Wonderful thank you. Chat. And uh, good luck for all the awards. Thank I'll you. Have everything crossed. I'm looking forward to seeing the results. Good. Cool. Thanks. Thank thanks you very much. much. How exciting for Sally. She actually went on to win the British Hairdressing Award the following week. We're going to post the photos of the collection. And on our next episode, I'm going to be talking to the famous Errol Douglas all about his journey with the British Awards as well. So stay tuned to my Hairy Chats podcast. Mm -hmm.